The Nikon Z8 is real, and in this video I've got some really exciting information for you, starting with a news story about a teaser campaign that's supposed to start this week, with various influencers, photographers, and Nikon ambassadors leading up to an announcement in the middle of May. But how accurate is this information, and what are the latest leaked specifications for the Nikon Z8? I've got all that information coming up shortly, but first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe to this channel, share, choose all notifications, like, comment, and all that stuff. It's greatly appreciated, but most importantly, especially your subscriptions, they really help this channel grow. Nikon Rumors just published a story stating that the Nikon Z8 teaser campaign will start next week, on or around April the 26th, 2023. The multiple website updates that we experienced over the last couple of weeks and events point to a big event in the next couple of days. Nikon Rumors goes further saying that the teaser campaign is expected to be different and include different influencers, photographers, and Nikon ambassadors talking about the Z8 camera capabilities, talking about all the goodness baked into the Nikon Z8. And if you'll recall over the past couple of weeks, we've seen various Nikon websites go down. Nikon Asia, Nikon Australia, and even Nikon USA, which went down just a couple of days ago. And all these events kind of led us to believe that one of a couple of things. One, Nikon has a pretty bad, well, web architecture or <laughs> back end, because in this day and age, a website shouldn't go down. It's easy to provide failover from one site to another or from one location geographically to another. So when these sites went down, it kind of had us thinking, okay, maybe they're getting ready for some sort of a campaign. And then of course, just a couple of days ago, Nikon Pakistan, well, they had a bit of a hiccup on their site showing the Nikon Z8 mirrorless camera. It was kind of grayed out, it had a placeholder, but on the products page, there definitely was a Nikon Z8. So now it looks like Nikon Rumors is confirming all that stuff saying that, yes, look, the Nikon Z8 is not only real, but the influencer campaign is about to start on or around April the 26th, which is just in a couple of days. And if you go back, let's give Nikon rumors a bit of slack here because back when How to Fly was saying that the Nikon Z8 and Z6 Mark III were supposed to be announced in the middle of summer and then October, what was Nikon rumor saying all along? No, not until the second quarter, sometime around April, May, or June. And I think they were focusing on May and here we are coming up to the last week of April and now the teaser campaign is supposed to begin. So Nikon rumors has done a really good job being staying on top of this. And even though they caught a little bit of flack over the websites being down, reporting on that. And then of course, Nikon Pakistan, it looks like all this information is paying off. So when Nikon Rumors is saying that it's supposed to start on or around April the 26th this week, well, then I'd definitely take notice. So when can we expect the Nikon Z8 to be announced? The Nikon Z8 is rumored to be officially announced in the second week of May, on or around May the 9th. So May the 9th, that's coming up pretty close. It seems like it's just a couple of weeks away, but well, that's because it is. So let's take a look at the rumored specifications for the Nikon Z8. Now these are coming from Nikon rumors and other sources, including my own sources. First of all, the sensor. The Nikon Z8 is supposed to have a 45.7 megapixel stacked full frame sensor. And this, according to Nikon rumors, it's gonna have the exact same sensor as the Z9. So a stacked sensor, well, they got Canon beat there. Well, at least with the R5. It's also supposed to have the exact same image processor, the X-Speed 7. And in terms of still shooting, well, Nikon Rumors doesn't mention this. I'd be surprised if it doesn't copy Canon with the R5 and give us 20 frames per second electronic or somewhere between 10 and 14 frames per second mechanical. The Sony a7R5 with a higher res resolution of 61 megapixels only delivers 10 frames per second, but that's most largely due to those type A CF Express cards too, because you've got a limitation of some, well, it's got a single PCI lane versus two PCI lanes on CF Express type B. In terms of the form factor, the Nikon Z8 is supposed to, well, be similar in terms of size and form factor to the Nikon Z7 or the Nikon Z6, both Mark IIs. And in terms of storage, well, we don't know for sure, but we expect it's gonna have one CF Express Type-B and one UHS-2 card slot. But if they gave us two CF Express Type-B cards, that would be big. We have heard a few rumors of that. I would love to see that. Um, I love CF Express Type-B. And as we see the price dropping to somewhere under 30 cents per gigabyte, CF Express Type-B with its much faster speeds, allowing you to shoot at 1.2 gigabytes per second, 20 frames per second lossless raw, without filling up the buffer. It's absolutely a dream. The cards are incredible. 
But in terms of Stills' capabilities, we don't have a whole lot. I don't know what it is with these rumors where they're centered on Stills' capable cameras that are, well, video is a certainly an important aspect, but you'd expect to have more information about dynamic range, ISO, and all sorts of other things, but we don't. We do have some video specifications, and the Nikon Z8 is supposed to deliver the same resolution and refresh rate as the Nikon Z9, 8K, 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60 frames per second. That has both the Canon R5 and the Nikon A7R5B. Now the Canon R5 will do 8K RAW at 30 frames per second, but it does stop at 30. To be able to produce 50 and 60 frames per second is impressive. My question is, will it do it with RAW, all eye, or long op, or all three? I think having all three or even offering a cinema version that is, well, three different compression rates, I think that would go a long way. But that kind of has us thinking that, well, if it can do 8K 60, I think it's pretty safe to say it's going to do 4K 120. The Canon R5 does it, but the Sony A7 R5 doesn't. And that's one of the real interesting things here. You see, a lot of the groundwork has already been laid for the Nikon Z8. We've got the Canon R5 at 3899, and we've got the Sony A7 R5 at 3898. Both cameras very similar. Now, the Sony does 61 megapixels, but only 10 frames per second, whereas the Canon EOS R5 at 45 megapixels does 20 frames per second. So we've kind of laid the groundwork for Nikon. Now, Nikon has a choice, and we're going to get to more specifications shortly, but the real big thing here is Nikon going to beat the competition? And they don't have to beat it by a whole lot. And don't worry about the Z9. Let's just worry about the competition because it's going to sell well to Nikon customers. But if it's going to sell well to Canon and other customers, Sony customers, if it's going to appeal to other people, it needs to sell outside of that range so it's going to offer better capabilities. So I'm really hoping that the Nikon Z8 will have better capabilities than the three-year-old Canon R5 and better capabilities than the Sony a7R5, but because the Sony is high megapixels or high resolution at 61 megapixels, um, with the Nikon Z8 being at 45, it's kind of got its road paved for it, and I think it's going to be closer to the Canon EOS R5 in terms of the capabilities it offers. So 4K 120, no problem. Will it go higher than that? Well, what do you think? Let me know in the comments section down below. But in terms of 1080, I would expect 120, but will they go higher? It takes an awful lot of effort to go much higher than that, and they certainly could, but at this point, I'm just going to call it at 120 frames per second. Now, will it do Nikon RAW? Will it do other different types of codecs? And I think it's safe to say the answer is going to be yes. It's going to have the Nikon EL15 battery and also support an extended battery grip. Now, the EVF is going to be capable up to 9 million, or not capable up to, it's going to be capable of 9 million dots, that's only second to the Sony at 9.44 million. And the autofocus system is going to be improved. It's not going to be a new autofocus system like Sony did with the A7R5 with a dedicated AI chip, but it's going to be much improved. Again, I don't know if they're going to put in some sort of dedicated AI chip or not, but it's definitely going to be improved. And now for the pricing. We've already talked about the Canon EOS R5 at $38.99, although what I failed to mention is since Black Friday, November the 25th, 2022, the Canon EOS R5 has been on sale anywhere from two dollars to $400 off and is currently $200 off. But let's just go with the regular retail price of $38.99 and the Sony a7R5, $38.98. So with those two cameras priced there, I'd be surprised if Nikon goes higher than $38.99, but I wouldn't be surprised if they go lower. Not a whole lot lower, maybe one, two, three, or $400 at the very most because just remember what they did with the Nikon Z9. Not only did that camera impress, but it shocked, selling $1,000 less than the competition. Prior to this, the D5, D6, the 1DX Mark III, the Alpha One, all these flagship cameras sold for around $6,500. Well, the Nikon Z9 came out for $5,500. So I wouldn't be surprised if they use a little bit of that magic on the Nikon Z8. So even if it's similar in specs to the Canon R5, or the a7R5, but it's priced quite a bit less, well, that will garner an awful lot of attention. So what about euros? Well, it's supposed to be around 4,500 euros. Now, depending on which country you're in, keep in mind that that price, if you're not from Europe, that price includes a 20% or sometimes as high as 24, 25% uh, value-added tax into the price. But now what about shipping dates? What about announcement dates? Well, we already kind of let this out of the bag earlier, saying May the 9th, but Nikon Rumors did have this to say, as I discussed before, there are multiple dates involved in these announcements, 
and it's hard to say what is what. So Nikon rumors did say that May the 9th is the most likely date, but again, they're hearing multiple things that all they can really say is it's going to be sometime in the middle of May. In terms of shipping, well, they're saying that the shipping date will be sometime towards the end of May or early June. Whew, take a deep breath. <sighs> okay, I'm, I'm getting a, some shivers right now, and it's not just because it's probably about 50 degrees, degrees here in the studio, but we've been hearing about the Nikon Z8 for a long time, just like we did for the Nikon Z9, and now, after about a year, we're hearing that not only is it real, but we're going to get teased by photographers, ambassadors, videographers, starting around the 26th of April, which means Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, this week, not next week, not next month, not next year, it's happening. And once the teaser campaign starts, it doesn't matter what the rest of the rumors are, you know that an announcement is imminent within at least three weeks. We saw that with the Nikon Z9. As soon as we got that first teaser, within less than a month, we got the official announcement. And once we got the announcement, you know that shipping is going to start pretty soon with pre-orders. Now, what I'm including in this video here, you'll see I've got a pre-order link for the Nikon Z8 at Adorama or B&H. Those aren't obviously active right now, but if you're if you're going to be watching this video right up until the launch of the uh, the Nikon Z8, I can guarantee you that these links are going to bring up the pre-order. They're special links that once the announcement is there, once the cameras are available for pre-order, these links will work. But yeah, I'm pretty excited. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Oh, my heart's beating a little bit fast. I, I don't know what it is about tech like this. You see, I'm a camera geek. I'm not a Canon geek. I'm not a Canon fanboy. I'm a camera fanboy. And I'm really excited by what the Nikon Z8 can do. And as a Canon EOS R5 owner, I really do hope that the Nikon Z8 kicks it. That is way better because, well, that's good for all of us, right? It spurs on the competition and the R5 Mark II might be just a little bit better. And if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news and rumors regarding the Nikon Z8, whether it be pricing, new leak specifications that come out, spec sheets, data sheets, photography, whatever, leaked videos, leaked re video reviews, these always seem to happen. Whatever it is, Make sure you subscribe. It won't cost you anything at all, and it really does help my channel grow. And also, choose all notifications, so that way, as soon as a video is published, you get notified by YouTube. You'll get a little um, mention in the, the little bell up top at the top of the browser, but you want to pay attention to your junk and spam folder because sometimes those email notifications come in there. So pretty exciting stuff. I can't, re I really can't wait. I'm super excited by this. And for all the minor news and rumors, such as uh, if a price um, discount comes out, for example, the Nikon Z6 Mark III, Mark II, Mark II, is on sale for $300 off at about $26.99, I think. So you want to follow me on Twitter because all the news stories that aren't quite big enough to have their own separate video, or if you see a deal of the day, a price discount, like the Nikon Z6 Mark II, not three. Well, then follow me on Twitter. And by following, following me on Twitter and subscribing to this YouTube channel, that way you can stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors. Whew, I'm super excited. I have to go upstairs and edit this now. And I, I'm just having trouble speaking. I'm tripping over my words because my mind is miles ahead thinking of where this is going to lead us to. So I'm super excited. Uh, but I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for, for subscribing and commenting. We'll see you again soon.